Sutomo Yamaguchi couldn't know it, but his life was about to change. Granted, the world was at war, but he had a job to do and he was proud of his work. His country needed ships, so that's what he helped to design. Yamaguchi was a draftsman for the Mitsubishi Company, and his latest effort was a draft designed for a 5,000-ton oil tanker. The job was finally complete, and he was preparing to return home to his family after being separated for three months. He couldn't wait to see his wife and two-year-old son. It had been too long. So, on the morning of August 6, 1945, Yamaguchi got his things together and stepped out into the early morning sun to catch a train. What Yamaguchi didn't know was that he was about to have a strange encounter with an atomic bomb. Japan had been at war with the U.S. for almost four years. Since the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the people of Japan had been on edge, and Yamaguchi was no different. He worried about what defeat might look like for his country. He loved his country, and he loved the work he did for the Mitsubishi Company. He was able to provide for his family, and for a 28-year-old man, that was something to be proud of. As he made his way to the train station in Hiroshima, it suddenly occurred to him that he'd forgotten his personal seal at the office. He'd have to hurry back to get it and still have time to catch the train to his hometown of Nagasaki. On his way back to the office, something in the sky caught his eye. It was a plane. Yamaguchi watched as something appeared to separate from the plane. Was it a Japanese plane and had it accidentally dropped something? But whatever it was, it was falling slower than he would have expected if it had fallen out of the plane accidentally. He then saw why. The object was attached to a parachute which slowed its descent. It had been intentional. But why? Curiosity gave way to horror. The object was cylindrical shaped. A voice inside of him told him what he was watching fall towards Hiroshima. It was a bomb. Yamaguchi did the only thing he could think to do. He jumped into the nearest ditch, closed his eyes, and covered his ears. All he could think about was his family in the next few seconds. Yamaguchi's world was turned upside down, literally. With his eyes still tightly closed, he was thrown high into the air. When he hit the ground, everything went black. As Yamaguchi slowly gained consciousness, he thought he was either dead or had gone blind. The sun, which only moments before had shone down upon Hiroshima, was gone. And then he felt the pain in his arms, face, and ears. He wasn't blind. The world was covered in dust and soot. And the sun, it was still up there, but it was hidden behind a mushroom cloud that filled the entire sky. The bomb, called Little Boy, which had been dropped on the city by an American B-29, had detonated 580 meters above the ground, and two miles away from where Yamaguchi struggled to his feet. The pain he felt grew more intense. His arms were badly burned, and he assumed his face must be as well. The sound was muffled. His eardrums had been ruptured. Not sure what to do next, he stumbled through the debris and back towards the Mitsubishi offices. They weren't there. The buildings were gone. Everything was gone. He gradually became aware of other shapes in the gloom around him, other survivors. Some were worse off than he was. Together, Yamaguchi and the others made their way to an air raid shelter. It was there that he learned a train was still scheduled to leave for Nagasaki the next morning. He could still make it home to his family. 
For Yamaguchi, at that moment, nothing else mattered except to get home. The things he saw as he struggled through the pain in his bandaged arms and face would live with him forever. Buildings once tall and solid had been reduced to rubble and ash. Bodies littered the streets, and he was forced to look away. It was either that or go mad. When he reached a river, he could see no way across, so he had to swim. The river was jammed at one point, and at first he thought it was logs or timber that had been thrown there by the explosion. It wasn't. The river was littered with the bodies of the dead. Yamaguchi eventually found a single railroad beam which had escaped the blast, and it allowed him to make his way across and over the bodies. On the other side, he found the rumors to be true. There was indeed a train still scheduled to leave for Nagasaki. And so Yamaguchi settled in for the long 190 mile ride home. When he finally arrived home, his wife and son barely recognized the bandaged man at the door. She at first thought he must be the ghost of her husband. News about Hiroshima had traveled fast. Yamaguchi told her what had happened and collapsed. The next morning, August 9th, Yamaguchi forced himself out of bed and told his wife he was going to the Mitsubishi offices in Nagasaki to report to work. When he told his bosses about Hiroshima's fate, they were incredulous. They told him he was mistaken. They didn't doubt what he had been through. His injuries and bandages were enough to convince even the hardest skeptic. But what they couldn't buy was that one bomb could totally annihilate an entire city. It wasn't humanly possible to make something with that much destructive force. As they discussed the validity of Yamaguchi's report, the clock struck 11.02 a.m. The explosion threw Yamaguchi to the floor. Everything around him came crashing down. The second bomb, known as Fat Man, was even bigger than the bomb which had been dropped on Hiroshima. It completely destroyed Nagasaki, including the Mitsubishi offices. Miraculously, Yamaguchi survived. His first thought was that the mushroom cloud which had filled the skies above Hiroshima had followed him to Nagasaki to finish the job. He once again found himself faced with the horrors of a decimated city, bodies, and darkness. On top of this, his wife and child lived here. So he raced home. They were badly shaken, but okay. Six days later, Japan surrendered to the U.S. on August 15, 1945. The war was over. Tsutomu Yamaguchi had survived both atomic bomb blasts. Not only that, but he and his wife would go on to have two more children, two beautiful daughters who are both alive today. As for Yamaguchi, he lived a long, miraculous life. It wasn't without obstacles. The radiation burns and exposure he suffered made for a long, painful journey back to health. After the war, he worked as a translator for the American forces that occupied Japan. And later, he went back to work for Mitsubishi. His wife, too, suffered from the effects of radiation exposure and poisoning from the black rain which fell on Nagasaki days after the explosion. She lived until 2008, succumbing to cancer. Tsutomu Yamaguchi outlived his wife by two years, dying in 2010 of stomach cancer at the age of 93. When he died, the mayor of Nagasaki stated that a precious storyteller had been lost. Today, Tsutomu Yamaguchi is the only person officially recognized as having survived both atomic blasts. It is estimated that the blasts killed 140,000 people in Hiroshima and another 80,000 in Nagasaki. Half were killed as a result of the blast and the rest due to injuries and the long-term effects of radiation poisoning. In the 65 years after the bombings, Yamaguchi tried to put the war and the horrors that he experienced behind him. He gradually began to speak about it, writing poetry and advocating for nuclear disarmament. Of the horrors of war and the atomic bomb, he had first-hand experience. One of the few people in the world who could ever say that, and hopefully the last. 
The thing about Yamaguchi was that he wasn't bitter about what had happened to him. Had he the means to change it, there is no doubt he would have. Both he and his wife suffered greatly from the blasts, and the long-term effects can't be denied. Even his children bore evidence of what radiation poisoning can do. Although born after the blast and healthy, his daughters were more prone to sickness than their classmates, not to mention his son, who was alive when Nagasaki was bombed and died at the relatively young age of 58. But Tsutomu Yamaguchi still wasn't bitter. Of his life, he had this to say, I could have died on either of those two days. Everything that follows is a bonus. Well said, Mr. Yamaguchi. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe and leave a review. It really does help others find the show. And if you know someone who might enjoy the show, please tell them about it. You can find more information and references that went into this episode by going to strangeencounters.org. I would really like to hear your suggestions for future episodes as well. And if you've had a strange encounter with something unusual or paranormal, I would love to hear it. Visit the contact page for information on submitting your story. And until next time, please take care of yourself. It's a strange world out there. Seven. 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 Seven.